So today we are going to try to repair a Swedish mechanical calculator uh, from the brand Facit. Uh, this one is a TK model, one of their early models from 1936. Uh, you can't crank it up unfortunately. Uh, I have two other models from them. I have an automated one uh, from 1947. Uh, this one has been broken during transport, so it's probably quite a difficult repair. And I have a 1971, and uh, this one is branded Facit, but it's actually a sharp calculator uh, with a nice, beautiful Nixie tubes in there. And this one already works. Um, so, uh, what I want to do today is try to get this one uh, to work. It's been on the queue for repair for a long time. Ew. This is uh, the joys of pin extraction in fine antique mechanisms see you got it there you go all right so here it's without its clothes and uh, apart from the pin extraction, uh, that was actually fairly easy. And here it is in all its glory. And uh, I had worked on this one before, so I had, uh, figured out where the problem is. Uh, let's see if I can unstick it in front of the camera. I have to do two things at the same time. Push it down, push it down. I think I did it. Uh, so now... Oh yes, there we go. It works. And back until you clear it and that should yeah, it's stuck again. Okay, uh I should be able to uh, repair that. Okay, victory. It seems to uh work again. And while we have its parts out, um I can sort of demonstrate how it works. So these will move the number, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, five, seven, eight, nine. And now you can see what happened. Right when I turn this, it moves those wheels here by the number of pins that have been raised. And of course, the number of pins that have been raised depend on what the number here has been set to. So that's why it's called a pinwheel machine. And then over there, there's a carry mechanism, uh, which is harder to see. And here the counter. And that will clear it over here. That will clear it over there. That will clear it over here and as usual those things are also clever so it turns out the wheels are not symmetric zero is in the middle five to nine is at the top and one to four is at the bottom so here's the bar that pushes towards the top and does zero to four and here's the bar that pushes the other direction and it will do five six seven eight or nine and then you can see I'll do one two three four then five six seven eight nine see how it moved the other direction then when I make it work you can see how clever that is. This is one with one pin, this is two with two pins, three and four pins. Five, there's just a row of five pins, there's a whole block. I don't know if you can see it over here. 
6 is the block of 5 plus 1, 7, same thing. And eventually 9 has the block of 5 pins plus the 4 pins at the bottom. And of course all the cleverness is in, inside this barrel here to raise the pins when you um, turn the wheel the right amount. So that's pretty clever. Well, let's see if I can demonstrate how the carry mechanism works. Let's put in all fives. Right, there's all five over here. Let's do a first crank. Brings it to all five and the next one is going to first set the carry levers and then they are going to go one by one as I continue to turn. So here we go. They're all set. The first one just went. Two, three, four, five, six, rip. And now they all went again. Try it again. So this turn does nothing. Next turn. By the way, another clever thing here. You see how the numbers are not all moving at the same time? Well, that's not an imperfection. It's done on purpose, uh, so it gives a more, a smoother feel to the machine. Okay, and now, okay, the carry levers are rising. Here's the last one. So they're all armed from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. And um, the carry hasn't propagated yet, and you see those wheels at the back, they have little spikes still release the levers. So let's go down. First one, the second, third, whip, 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 and all they are all done. Very clever. The same thing from the back, where you can see. the carry release pins and also there see they're all in a helix here so all the carries the, the carries do ripple through And a view of the counter auto reverse mechanism. You see those two wheels here. So if I start with a forward crank, they all move in unison, and this thing is counting uh, up. Now, if I reset and start with a reverse crank, now they move reverse. And they'll keep moving reverse even if I count the other direction. So now this is a positive turn. One, two, three, four. And this is a negative turn. The only way to reset this is to start again. And now this is a forward turn. And it counts the other way around. Very clever. So now it should work. Let's see if we can uh, make a little calculation on that one. There was only like three things wrong with it, so I looked out. Um, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, correct. Plus five, six, seven, eight, nine. Does 69,134. So it worked. And then if we do a subtraction, let me clear everything. Um, let's do 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Look and one, two, three, four, five. Clock and it works again. Um, let's try the division <coughs> and see if the uh, tab mechanism and gee, I haven't put the screw back on this one, so there we go. 
And uh, the reverse counting mechanism works. So um, five, five, five. Uh, nope. Five, five, five. Nope, not either. Three, five, five. Boom. Enter. Reset. One, one, three. I'll tab it to the end. And now I'll start with a minus turn to do a division. And this thing should come up red and count positive. And it just did. It's red and it's positive. One, two, three. Ding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ding. Okay, um, I, um, as you can tell, calculating pi here by making a clever division. Ding. Okay, we could go on like this. Ah, 120 turn. So 3.14159 is the result of uh, 355 divided by 113 and uh, the famous fraction so the machine is repaired i'll make a, a complete demo video when it's reassembled